May I invite the next group to join the stage with such an interesting topic about alteration of pseudomonas, aeruginosa gene expression during anaerobic respiration, presented by Mr. Puri Shunkamrai. Okay, um, good morning. Uh, my name is Puri Shingamrai, and I'm a fourth year medical student from the Faculty of Medicine, Sina Kriroa University, Thailand. Today I'll be presenting about the alteration of pseudomonas aeruginosa gene expression during anaerobic respiration. So, um, before we begin, I would like to ask everyone in the auditorium to think about the problems of infectious diseases that we are having right now. Um, treatment of infectious diseases has become more and more challenging over the past several decades. Um, uh, why is that so? Although there's a variety of antibiotics up to date, uh, many bacteria are gaining the ability to um, uh, develop resistance to these drugs. So for that, um, Pseudomonas aeruginosa is one of them. Uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa is one of the leading causes of healthcare-associated infections and are currently one of the greatest threats to clinical practice. Uh, it, consists of, it consists of several resistance ability, including intrinsic ability, uh, resistance ability, acquired resistance, and adaptive resistance, which allows it to uh, adapt to the antibiotics. Um, to make everything worse, this pathogen does not need oxygen. So what's the mechanism behind it? Uh, several years ago, um, new, through numerous researches, it has been found that um, at the, in, during the absence of oxygen, so the best way for pseudomonas aeruginosa to generate energy is through a process called denitrification. I'm not going to go into much detail about it. However, um, basically, uh, pseudomonas aeruginosa can use nitrogen instead of oxygen for respiration. Um, this was proven several years ago, so not many genes were studied under this con condition. Therefore, leading to the aim and objectives of this study, identification of genes involved in the functioning of pseudomonas aeruginosa under anaerobic respiration can thus provide a hint to a potential novel drug target. Therefore, this study aimed to investigate pseudomonas aeruginosa regulation of quorum sensing genes, global regulatory genes, secondary metabolism and virulence factor genes under the absence of oxygen. Um, this research first started off with a comprehensive search to, um, for genes of interest, and uh, each uh, the chosen genes were separated into three groups, so the quorum sensing genes, global regulatory genes, and the secondary metabolism and virulence factor genes. Af afterwards, raw data from the RNA sequencing of um, Pseudomonas aeruginosa PA01 uh, were then obtained and analy uh, analyzed using a bioinformatics interface called Galaxy in which um, four change analysis for, um, were conducted to compare the change in gene expression for each condition. Af afterwards, significant genes that reached the minimum threshold set were then further analyzed. Uh, the minimum threshold set was uh, set as for each gene to be um, downregulated by at least twofold or upregulated by at least twofold. This, um, so, so why the number two? That's because a, a study by, conducted by Romero et al. in 2017 has proven that um, genes are considered to be significantly altered in each condition uh, at the rate of twofold at least. So um, the results from this study suggested that there were 10 genes that reached the minimum threshold set. Um, the PQSA, PQSB, PQSC, PQSD, and PQSE, all known together as the PQSA, B, C, D, E operon, were downregulated on an average of 8.06 fold. The PHRS were downregulated by at least 5.21 fold. Um, Leg A were downregulated by 3.01 fold. PPRB were upregulated by 2.16 fold. Last I were upregulated by 2.29 fold. And RSMY were upregulated by 5.56 uh, 5 fold. So I'm not going to go into details about all of it due to time recent. However, the three novel, novel findings from this study is that during oxygen depletion, there's a reduction of PQS A, B, C, D, E operon mRNA levels. So um, why is this important? The PQS A, B, C, D, E operon mRNA, uh, the PQS A, B, C, D, E operon is considered as one of the quorum sensing genes along with the LAS and RHL. These three are really important in the functioning of Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Why so? Um, quorum sensing systems regulate virulence factors, their response to changes in population density and environmental stress. They trigger the sig signal transduction cascade, which allows Pseudomonas aeruginosa um, to alter its, its genes expression uh, during 
um, each condition. They also control the production of virulence factors, other metabolites, and formation of biofilms. So with quorum sensing system, the chances that Pseudomonas aeruginosa will successfully colonize the host increases by several folds. And in this study, it has been proven that um, Pseudomonas uh, aeruginosa has a depletion of Q, PQS, ABCD, operon by up to eightfold. So how come it's still alive under the absence of oxygen? Um, the answer to that question can be answered uh, through the novel findings, uh, the other two novel findings of this study. So our st my studies has found that there's an upregulation of PPRB during an um, anaerobic condition, which increases the biofilm formation. Uh, biofilm formation is very important. Uh, uh, it, it contributes to the survival of Pseudomonas aeruginosa, especially during, um, uh, it protects from, from harmful environment. So the, PP, the upregulation of PPRA and PPRB helps increase the biofilm formation altogether. Um, as for such, the RZMY upregulation also favors the T6SS and biofilm formation during absence of oxygen. So RZMY functions to decrease the, um, pr uh, the production of RZMA, which RZMA represses the production of T6SS and increases the T3SS, which is a, an acute infection phenotype. So with the upregulation of RZMY, there's a decrease in RZMA and uh, consequently decrease in the suppression of genes caused by RZMA. So it increases the T6SS and biofilm formation altogether. So um, as for the clinical application, uh, airway infection caused by Pseudomonas aeruginosa should now be approached as an anaerobic disease rather than aerobic disease. Um, future study on this topic should focus on targeting PPRB and ISMY. Currently, there are several drugs, drugs that target quorum sensing systems such as the PQSA inhibitor or the PQSC inhibitor. However, so how come there's still uh, the antibiotic resistance problem? That's because the PQS inhibitor from this study has been shown that during the absence of oxygen, it's already very, very low. So with this research into play, PPRB inhibitor or the RSMY inhibitor could potentially become a recommended add-on therapy in the near future. Um, in conclusion, this study provided an insight into how Pseudomonas aeruginosa alters its gene expression in order to survive during the absence of oxygen. Findings from this study suggested that signaling molecules may be able to affect each other during the need to adapt for a specific environment. For instance, during the absence of oxygen, there was a downregulation of quorum sensing genes. However, with the upregulation of other global regulatory genes, Pseudomonas aeruginosa was able to maintain its biofilm information, adhesion, and invasive ability. This is only the beginning of a rigorous process to fully under understand the pathogenesis of Pseudomonas aeruginosa and the development of new therapeutic agents to treat this worldwide antibiotic <laughs> resistance problem. Thank you. Your insightful presentation was so impressed. Do you have any comments or any questions? Okay. So could you elaborate more, like, what is the data that you're getting from? So you get from the literature or you get a sample yourself and do the uh, whole genome sequencing or... Oh, yes. So um, due to the COVID-19 restriction uh, in the UK, we asked the company called Novogene to uh, obtain the PQS, uh, the Pseudomonas aeruginosa PAO1 um, sequence and do the RNA sequencing for us. And once we get all the data, like the six... Um, the 60,000 gene, um, genes, we then analyze it using a bioinformatics interface called the Galaxy. And what is the uh, cutoff or the protocol that you use in Galaxy to say which gene has been upregulated or downregulated? Oh, um, in, inside the uh, bioinformatics interface, the Galaxy, there's uh, several functions called the DSEC2 function and the uh, um, genome sequencing change or something around that, um, which uh, once we analyze the data, it will say, um, and we adapt it to an Excel, Excel file, we were able to like, compare the genes fold, and as I mentioned, the two, two um, four change were chosen for those 10 genes. Okay, the DSA2 is the, the answer I want to hear. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, after you uh, receive the data from an A sequencing, do you study about the phenotypic chain in uh, biofilm formation or not? Oh, we, we wanted to do that, but um, this research was separated into two parts. So me and uh, my other colleague, the, uh, the other colleague, was a, um, he studied about the more of the biofilm formation side, while I studied about the quorum sensing gene side. Yes, but um, altogether, I think uh, it would be very useful once we combine the data, because it's going to be a very big data, which will support the development of new 
um, I believe, new therapeutic uh, agents to treat uh, this Pseudomonas aeruginosa problem. Could you explain a little bit more why the gene that changed uh, the expression under anaerobic um, respiration or an 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 anaerobic environment could be uh, 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 interacting drug target for pseudomonas? Oh, okay. So, um, as I mentioned several years ago, uh, there's a research coming out that pseudomonas aeruginosa can survive under anaerobic respiration, but the fact that um, it's already uh, very difficult to study. Not many people have studied about the denitrification gene. So by doing so, um, we, we will be able to understand more about how they were able to out, uh, overcome all the problems or like um, even if we limit the oxygen supply for them, how are they able to survive? So this study, I think, uh, provide the explanation to that and could potentially um, help in the future. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much.